Even to this day, it stands as a symbol for salvation and help coming on the way. Man, I thought that was great. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 22 says, turn to me and be saved and be saved all you ends of the earth for I am God and there is no other. Why is the cross so important? Because what the cross did is it has the power to save you, save you. I asked students, I pastor students obviously, I talked to a lot of them, I asked them one time, hey, um, what does the cross mean? I want to hear from you guys, tell me what the cross means to you. And, and the consensus, the majority would say, well, Pastor Clay, the cross means that, you know, because Jesus went to the cross, we can be forgiven of our sins. That's what it means, Pastor Clay, forgiveness of our sins. Now look, that's true. 100% true, but see, what I'd like to share with you this morning is Jesus doesn't just forgive people of their sins, he saves people from their sins. There's a difference. You see that word forgive, um, great word, we just don't really use it that often anymore, talking amongst each other in this day and age. Like even when you do someone wrong, uh, and you go back to them and you're like, hey man, look, I, I'm sorry, I apologize for what I did. Very rarely does that person ever look back to you and say, oh, I forgive you. They don't even hardly say that anymore. They'll say, man, look, it's all good, don't worry about it, water under the bridge, we're okay, whatever. We don't even use the word forgive that much. But the word save, we use a lot. We, we save money, we play on sports teams and we save a ball from going into the net. We save our papers and documents on a computer so we don't lose it. You see, the word save implies that unless it happens, there's consequences. Unless something is saved, there's consequences. So if you don't save money, the consequence is you ain't got it. <laughs> you have none. That's a bad consequence. You can't buy stuff, can't pay bills. If you don't save the ball from going into the net, your team could lose the game. There's a consequence. If you don't save your document on the computer, it could get deleted or lost, and, and, and that's going to be a, a big consequence. If you don't save, there's consequences. But because it was saved, you don't have to bear the consequence. Listen, church, Jesus saved you from your sins. In other words, if he hadn't, your sins were going to kill you, destroy you, and drag you to hell. But because of his goodness and his love towards us, he stepped in, he got on the pole held high, and he saved us from the sins that were out to kill us. <laughs> Students would often ask, well, I mean, that's, that's great, Pastor Clay, I'm glad Jesus did that for us, but I mean, he's God. And being God, couldn't he just have got up off the cross and thrown a beat down on everyone that was trying to mess with him. I mean, I wouldn't have done, Pastor Clay, I'd have jumped off there and, you know, I mean, why didn't he just get off the cross and, and fight? No, no, no. In order to save us, he could not save himself. The Bible says in Matthew 27, in the same way that the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him, he saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. In other words, um, Jesus, you are I mean, you healed that one guy, Jesus, and oh yeah, you, re you restored those other people, Jesus, and you even brought that dude, Lazarus, is that his name, Lazarus? You even brought him back from the dead, Jesus. You did all this cool stuff, but you can't even save yourself. What in the world? I mean, if you really are the king, Jesus, why don't you just get up off the cross? They were mocking, but you see what's happening in their mocking is it's very, very ironic because no, 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 on the contrary, Jesus saves others. In fact, he's saving the entire world in this moment by choosing not to save himself. You see, they were speaking to his physical restraints, the nails in his hands and his feet. In other words, they're saying, uh, Jesus, why don't you just pull those nails out? I mean, you're a big, strong guy, right? You can do all this stuff, and you, you and your disciples, why don't you just take the nails out of your feet and hands and just jump off the cross? But church, it wasn't the physical restraints that held him to the cross that day. It was his overwhelming love for you and I that held him to the cross. <laughs> Had nothing to do with nails in his hands. He loves you so much that he chose not to get off the cross. You see, the man who could not save himself actually does save others. I'll put it to you like this. In order to save you and I eternally, he refused to save himself momentarily. Eternity meant more to Jesus. As the band comes up and, and joins me, we're going to get ready to close. In 1997, there was a, a blockbuster hit movie that came out in the summer of 1997. Uh, it was a movie of an actual historical event 
that happened in the early 1900s. Uh, we all know it as Titanic. Came out in 1990. That feels like forever ago, doesn't it? That's a long time ago. Uh, and the movie came out. And, uh, and the movie was getting a lot of praise for being very accurate and true to uh, the historical event. You know, the way they did the ship down to the, the china that was in the dining room and the whole bit. They, they really made it, you know, look real. And they got a lot of praise for that. But there's a scene at the end of the movie where they kind of strayed from the actual event. And it's when the ship is going down and, and it's sinking there in the cold Atlantic ice water and in the movie it is portrayed that all the gentlemen you know all the guys in their tuxedos who are supposed to be real gentlemanly and, and the whole bit but in the moment they're I mean, they're pushing kids and women out of the way and they're just trying to be the first ones to to jump in the boat save themselves i want to save me i'm caring i'm caring about me you know me 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 and they're pushing through but in in reality historically that's not what happened at all um in fact it's told from eyewitnesses who were there and it's been passed down that no actually in that moment all the men on board were were very honoring and respectful and gentlemanly and they were helping usher women and, and children onto the life raft knowing that there's not enough for all of us and time is short and we're probably not going to make it and so when the historians saw the movie they contacted the writer and the director and uh, they, they sent letters, I'm sure, maybe even phone calls, and they basically said, hey, um, hey, hey, great movie, you know, it was, it was really, really great, um, but hey, uh, that, that ending scene where the ship's going down, um, you know, that's not how it happened at all, really, it was like this, and you portrayed it like that, and, and, and so, you know, wh why did you, why'd you do that? Like, the, the original story, the real thing would have been good enough, would have still made for a really, really great movie. And the response from the writer and the director was very interesting. They responded and they said, well, no, we know what really happened. But if we would have shown the truth, no one would have believed it. No one would have believed it. You see, church, our generation has a hard time believing that someone would willingly lay down their life for someone else. That someone would actually step in front of the car would actually push someone out of the way, would actually sacrifice and lay themselves down, not even just for family, but for, for people they don't know. Like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Our generation has a hard time with that. They, they can't understand it. Because what are we about? Well, unfortunately, we've grown to be about ourselves and, and beating others and, and competition, not showing weakness and pushing and shoving our way to the front. And, and we're so narcissistic at times. We care about ourselves. We don't care about anybody else. So when I stand up here as a preacher and I say that 2,000 years ago a man named Jesus, born in the Middle East, had you on his mind when he got on the cross and died a crucifixion death, a lot of people that hear that find it hard to believe. I never even met that man. I never shook his hand. And you're telling me he died for me? But yet nothing is, that I've ever said has been any truer. It's the truest thing that there is that Jesus loved you enough to die for you. Hebrews 12 and verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for who the joy set before him endured the cross. What was the joy? You were the joy. You were the joy that was on his mind as he was giving up his life on the cross. He stayed on the cross. He didn't take the nails out of his hands and his feet because you were the joy. And the beautiful thing in this picture is that you were his joy and he is your hope. And together, you're meant to have this eternal relationship in heaven. But you gotta look at him. Not just look, but you gotta look with faith upon the person of Jesus Christ. He stayed up there because you were his joy. And I'm here to tell you the truth this morning, church. I don't care what the world tries to sell you, he's your only hope. The only hope is found in Jesus Christ. What are you looking at? Do you have financial issues right now? What are you looking at? You got marriage problems on the verge of divorce. Maybe you even got out of the car fighting on your way in here this morning. What are you as a couple looking at and putting your hope in? Do you have, do you have emotional damage and depression? What are you looking at? Do you have a messed up thought life? What are you looking at? Have you been bitten by fear and worry and anxiety? What are you looking at? Have you been bitten by anger and pride? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Because he's the only one who can save you. Look, church, freedom from sin is not about what you're turning away from. It's about who you're turning to. 
Christianity is not about what you've said no to, it's about what and who you've said yes to. That's what this faith is all about. And someone once told me this and it changed my life and we'll end with this and I'm gonna pray for you. Literally, I heard this statement and it changed the way I viewed everything. They said, Clay, um, what you lift up is what you look at and what you look at is what you will look like. What are you lifting up in your family? What, what is that go-to thing that, that you go to? Is, 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 is it the pills that you go to immediately? Is it, the, is it the addiction that you go to? Is that what you're lifting up? Because if you keep lifting it up, you'll keep looking at it and you're just gonna look like it. What does that look like? It looks like a mess. It looks like a mess of destruction is what it looks like. Can I suggest this morning that we lift high each and every day, each and every moment and hour and minute and second, the person of Jesus. Because as often as we look at him, we'll begin to look more like him. That's the gospel, you guys. That's the gospel of our Lord. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I wanna ask the simple question this morning to everyone, what are you looking at? Maybe you're in this room this morning or today and, and you, you got here, I don't know, maybe you think you're here by accident. Someone drug you to church and you don't even really know how you ended up here, but but maybe you could say to yourself honestly, if you were truthful with yourself, you do not have a real and personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe you've spent the days of your life looking at things that have not satisfied thus far. I would encourage you this morning, why not look upon Jesus, place faith in him and allow him to be the hope that was meant for your life, your problems, your addictions, and that sinful nature. Apart from him, you will not see heaven. You will not see eternity and Jesus in his glory. But man, when you surrender your life to him, man, not only do you have so much to look forward to in the next life, but even in the here and now, his goodness and his favor and his faithfulness, man, it floods your life. I don't know what kind of life you're living right now, but if it ain't with Jesus, it's not a tenth of the life, a hundredth of the life that you could be living with him. Man, Jesus is so good. If you've never placed faith in Jesus and this morning you know you need to look in his direction and get serious about a relationship with him. Maybe this is the first time or maybe, man, you've just been kind of far away and you're just coming back home and you need to have that assurance of a relationship with Jesus. I, I'm not gonna embarrass you, but I would ask on the count of three that you lift your hands so that I could pray with you. One, two, three. Put your hand in the air. Thank you so much. Just keep it up just for a few seconds. Thank you for your boldness. Man, hands all the way in the balcony, on the floor, everywhere. Thank you so much. I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know, 30, 40 hands. Thank you so much. Man, there's, thank you. I see, I see all those over there. Thank you. Man, I see kids. I see adults. I see people, probably grandparents. I see so many people lifting their hands. You can put your hands down. I want us to pray this prayer together. If there's one thing I know about our church that I love about our church is that it's like family here. So I want us to pray this prayer. You can repeat it after me. And, and we're gonna believe that, man, as you exercise faith in the person of Jesus, right now in this moment, salvation power is flooding your life. And you can have the assurance leaving here today that you and Jesus are on good terms, that he paid the price. And now that righteousness, man, it's coming straight to you because of what he did on the cross. Let's repeat this together. Everyone say, Lord Jesus, this morning, I recognize my need for you. I look upon you with faith and belief that you are who you said you are, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, my Redeemer. And Lord, from this day on, you have all of my life, the good, the bad, and even the shameful, ugly things. I'm a child of God. I am yours and you are mine. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen.